It always comes back to this one. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel. I'm Justin, and in this video, we're going to be doing another comparison. Sure, MV7X, Rode, Pod Mic. The standard now for budget broadcast microphones. If you have a microphone that you want to go to, a lot of people have been choosing the Rode Pod Mic because it was the original, not original like in like budget options, but it was the first one that I saw that was marketed as the broadcast budget broadcast microphone. It's called the pod mic. So it's kind of on the nose there. And now the Shure MV7X is your budget option compared to the Shure SM7B. And I did that comparison that really wasn't a surprise, but it was, it was enlightening knowing that Shure makes good equipment regardless of their price and same thing goes for road road usually like 90 percent of the time 95 or maybe even 99 eh, 95 i'll give them 95 percent of the time they make really good equipment and i haven't been disappointed by anything they make and of course there are probably people out there that have been disappointed by something that they make but I honestly haven't been disappointed by anything that I get from Shure or things that I've used from Shure or Rode. So keep that in mind. So without any further ado, let's get into the builds of these things. And we got the hefty boy here, the Rode Pod Mic, which is very heavy, very nice construction. You know how I feel about this if you've been here before, but to refresh your memory and not to beat a dead horse or anything it is the heaviest microphone that i've experienced using and there are some that have come close like the pd70 comes close the uh sure sm7b comes close but this one's very heavy and also for the size the density of this microphone is incredible it's it's massive so great build i love the pod mic and the full yoke mount very similar to the sure mv7x now i love this i been wanting when i first heard about the mv7 i was like oh it's a dual microphone i'm not interested in that i'm not a fan of those it's just uh, i'm an xlr microphone kind of guy using an interface whatever it is but when they announced this one i was like i gotta get that one eventually but it took me a little while and eventually i got it when it was on sale so with the build i do feel that it's lacking in some aspects like i feel the body it's nice but comparatively speaking doesn't feel it's a weird thing to explain but it doesn't feel the same it feels a little thinner this one's thick for sure this one feels a little thinner it's a little more petite i guess maybe that's the right word i don't know uh but as far as like all around functionality and everything it's difficult for me because i love both these builds but I will give an upper hand to the Rode Pod mic, uh, only for the simple fact that I, I just, just that that little bit of feel. So slight edge, maybe like quarter of a point. I don't know, <laughs> something like that. These points don't matter. It's like whose line is it anyway? The points don't really matter. It just gives me a gauge of where I'm at. So now let's get into some techie talk and talk about the internals of these microphones, how they tick and everything that goes into it. I'll leave a graphic up of all these specs and then I'll talk about the things that really stand out. Now, the first thing that stands out is their sensitivity, and it's not really standoutish because it's only two decibels that they're off by, uh, with the Shure MV7 being a little more sensitive, but not by much. To be honest, it's not going to be that big of a difference. Uh, as far as the rest of it is concerned, uh, the impedance is pretty much the same. Give it's If it's within 100, it's pretty much the same. If you're being nitpicky, maybe you might have a problem with it, but for the most part, you're not going to notice that much. Now, when you get to the frequency response and the numbers, there is a difference. The Rode Pod mic is a standard 20 to 20. Very easy. But on the MV7, you have a 50 to 16 kilohertz. So you're more narrow and more honed in. Now, of course, below 50, you're probably not going to notice anything missing. Probably not. And to be honest, it might actually help you in cer certain aspects. Like I have a... Um, 
dehumidifier. That's the word. Okay, so dehumidifier in the other room. Those rumbles could be in that frequency, which maybe I should do a video on that. If you're interested in that kind of appliances and the frequencies that they come in at, let me know. So to dive a little bit deeper into the frequency responses, let's talk about the Shure MV7X and its low ends, because I like to start from the low end and move myself over. Obviously, I said it starts at 50 and it moves its way up. It's got more of like a natural low cutoff there, a little wavy and kind of like waves itself into the mids and it continues to rise as it moves up into the low mids and into the mids, not really flattening out, but moving steadily up. That could be good. That could be bad, depending on the person. Me personally, I think that's a little uh, lacking in that section. I like to have a more flat section, but... When you compare it to the Rode Pod mic, which has kind of like a flat area there in the low end, it doesn't really have much of a low cutoff, uh, like naturally. And then it has a high boost right around that 150 point where most people probably will have a nice boomy kind of sound, not boomy, but kind of low presence in their voice in that section. That's probably why they boosted it there. After that, it does a big dip into the midsection, which probably is there to cut out some muddiness, but I think it's a little bit difficult to put it there because everybody's voice is different and it's emphasized in certain areas. Uh, everybody's voice just gets a different feel for it. Just like every microphone's tuned, everybody else's voice is tuned. So it's tough to make that drastic decision, but they did it and it works a little bit, but depending on the person, it could be good or bad. And of course you could always alter this, but it is extra work in post. Now sticking with the Rode Pod mic in the mids, you notice that it's just, it, it's got some weird tunings and it's, it's kind of wavy, not wavy, but it's spiky in a way. You got that right before 1K, you got that peak there, which could be muddy in certain people's voices. Like if you have a nasally voice that lands right there, it could be annoying, but I, I don't know. I mean, for my voice uh, on a chart, it's not really appealing. Then as we move past 1K, it starts to rise up a little bit into the highs. Moving back to the Shure MV7X, it's just rising right up, moving on up. And I, comparatively speaking, I prefer the Shure MV7X in this regard, but they're both kind of eh in the midsection. I will lean towards the MV7X on this one, and I lean towards this one in the low end as well. Because I like that low end cutoff because it's just, it's more appealing to me. Now, lastly, the MV7X in the high end has a couple of peaks and it still, it, it rises up to that peak and then has a couple of valleys and uh, dips and uh, peaks and valleys as we go into it. And then obviously dips off at 16. I think it's a little narrow, but it's not terrible. I would rather it be 20 to 20. In my opinion, I like microphones having the flexibility of being able to manipulate later and I understand the marketing on this it's like oh you get to do less work but that doesn't apply to everyone that doesn't work for everyone everybody's voice is different so I don't know uh, taking away those frequencies is a little bit annoying in my my opinion maybe that's just my audio snootiness just speaking now as we go into the highs with the Rode pod mic it has that steady rise coming out of the mids, as I said, into the high mids. And then you got some peaks and valleys as it moves on up. And some presence boosts. And it's nice. I mean, it's it's a nice tuning. Is it my preference? A little bit. But that's on my voice. It's how I see it from my voice. And I'd like to have a little more flexibility. And, of course, I'm thinking about it on a chart, but I'm also having in the back of my mind how it sounds. So keep that in mind as well. But on a chart, I would have to give it to the Shure MV7 because it's a little less tuned and it's more flexible. For me, I mean, I, I'm coming from a person, person's perspective as a audio person and from an audio uh, engineer and an audio recordist perspective. Let me know if you think anything different in the comments. And it's pretty much a landslide victory in the frequency response curve with the MV7. And I, I kind of was surprised about this, but not really, because if you look at the chart, I mean, it makes sense from my perspective. Now, let's do some noise test, distance test, and off-axis rejection. Move around the room a little bit and see how it is. So now we're going to do a noise test. And I apologize if there's anything going on crazy upstairs. 
but that's the way it is and you may have to deal with the same thing. So keep in mind in those lulls, there will be some hiss and things like that because I boost it. And then keep in mind the outside noise. So here you go. All right, so you may have noticed like someone bowling upstairs, basically the dog just running back and forth with something. I can't remember what it was. It might be a bone or something related to bone related stuff. Uh, let's do some distance and off axis. All right, I'm about two feet away from the front of the microphones and this is what it's gonna sound like in the studio here. I treated it a little bit more if you saw the Sure versus the Sure video. Uh, I made the booth kind of like a canopy almost and like reducing the reflection back. And that was the part of the reason, like I think like half the reason why is because I was able to do that. I didn't think of it. And now that the other reason why is because my desk area is a little more presentable. So keep that in mind uh, when I'm doing these tests. And I apologize for the ball rolling upstairs. There's people like the ball during at night in the household. That's just the way it is. That's what happens when you have wood floors. It looks like a bowling alley. Okay, pod mic side. 90 degrees, about foot and a half, two feet away from the road pod mic. And this is what it's going to sound like in the studio here. I'm speaking towards a wall with a lot of stuff on the wall. Uh, it's not treated, but it has a lot of stuff, so not a lot of reflection back. So keep this in mind if you have a room that has a lot of stuff on the shelf or something like that. I'm trying to make it as relatable as possible, but in the untreated room, you'll be have, you will be having a more relatable room to what you would have. Sure MV7 side, this is about a foot away from the Sure MV7, and this is the off-axis rejection, 90 degrees, speaking towards a wall with a couple of moving blankets and a curtain, so very sound dampening material that I have there. That wasn't a good sentence, but I'm not known for my good sentences. I'm good for my audio stuff. All right, 180 degrees, about two feet away from the rears of the microphones. This is the off axis rejection in the studio, speaking towards those walls of the booth right now. And there's probably not a lot of reflection back, maybe a little off this wall, but definitely not in this area. I really do feel that maybe the ceiling, there might be some, but there's a carpet on the floor. so. I really do feel like it's a good setup, and hopefully with these cardioid polar patterns, it doesn't have a lot of uh, noise hitting this way, and also not a lot of reflection back. So let me know what you think down in the comments on this, and uh, how you like the new setup of uh, off-axis stuff and treatment, I guess that's the word. Having trouble talking today. All right, so we're in the booth right now with the Shure MV7 and the pod bike. Uh, and I'm listening to the Shure MV7 first, uh, just because, keep it simple. And it's the new comparison. Obviously, I've done a ton of comparisons with the pod mic, but now the pod mic is the playing second fiddle to this, at least uh, in this comparison. So what I'm noticing here in the booth, and as I probably said in the solo video of the Shure MV7X, I... I really like that low end and I changed my angle in which the booth is and I don't know if that makes much of a difference but I do like the way this thing sounds and has a little bit of sprinkle up top like a nice the sprinkle of some presence there and it at that wave you could hear the wave you could hear in that frequency response where it is an issue but it can come off a little muddy and that air is still there, but I still like it. I still really do. And I mentioned this in the solo video for the MV7X. I think when it comes to it, and when you weigh the options of good and bad, pros and cons, the provided windscreen, in my opinion, with my voice, is the best option. So if you throw on one of these, then it would be better too. So let's switch over to the pod mic and you notice where where those other tones are cut like you could hear the tones that are uh less emphasized in this one than this one and when we compared the frequency response you could see where the differences are in that midsection in that mid to mid highs those are where you're hearing the differences and it's not as airy that airy sound is what I'm not hearing as much going back to it you're noticing that 
yeah, that that's where it is. Like my nasally tone in that upper, like the mids and the high mids a little there. Depending on where they land, I'm not really sure exactly, but I'm I'm hearing that specifically right in my nose area. That that sound you're hearing, uh, comparatively speaking, when you're thinking of what's the difference between these in tone and that nasaliness is definitely more emphasized on the Shure MV7X than the pod mic right here. And if you're a person with a nasally voice like me, then maybe you lean towards the pod mic rather than the MV7X. And also you save some cash as well. But it comes down to a person-to-person thing. And before I'm going to give you my impressions on how these things sound and the tone in the booth, obviously it's much different when you listen in post, but I'm going to give you my impressions on how I hear it now. Let's do a plosive test. So naturally, with the provided windscreen on the Shure MV7X, not bad. Without, it's okay. Uh, with this, SC Electronics. And both. That's probably the best combination. If you could get the S Electronics one with that, it's a great combination. Now to the pop mic. It's okay. And with the windscreen or pop filter. Highly recommend getting this one. I love this one. All right, so let's talk about the tones of these microphones and see how I interpret them. Obviously, listening live, which is much different than post. Uh, I said it before, and I'm going to just try to elaborate a little bit further. Uh, the frequency response on both of these definitely represent each other very well, at least comparatively speaking, because you can see where the emphasis on the Sure MV7 is and where they aren't on the pod mic by just comparing those curves because if I scroll back to the Sure MV7 you're getting more of that airiness and where it is in the presence boost and you got that nice low end there there's a nice low end on the pod mic but I don't think it's as like broadcasty I guess going back to the pod mic let's confirm that so if I yeah it you got more of that like a little more mid, but less presence. It's more mid forward than this one, but I know that this one has a lot of presence in the upper end. So that's something to consider. And now let's go to the untreated room to see how these things fare in a more relatable environment. Not necessarily untreated, like bad reflective, but relatable. All right, so untreated room with the pod mic and the Shure MV7X. This is my old bedroom, about a 10 by 10 room, 10 foot, 8 foot, I don't know, ceiling, normal ceiling, very normal room, a lot of stuff in it, and very uh, reminiscent of any room that is just someone's bedroom or something like that. So I want this room to be relative to people, uh, more so than an untreated room, because there are times where you could do an untreated room that's completely untreated and a lot of reflection, and it's not relative to a lot of people, because... Normal people, I I don't want to say normal people, but most people, if they're recording, they're recording in a familiar space, like their bedroom or a living room or something with a lot of stuff in it. So keep that in mind when I use this room as my untreated room, because technically it's untreated, but stuff in the room certainly helps. So I'm talking about like two, three inches away from the fronts of these microphones. These are cardioid microphones, so they have polar patterns of cardioid type. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm doing all these in one shot uh, because I'm trying to catch up and I'm starting a job. So I need to record all this stuff beforehand so I could just edit and I'll be on the road. So let's do a distance test. This is about a foot away from the fronts of the microphones. And this is what it's going to sound like in the untreated room. Uh, like I said, a lot of stuff in the room. So it um, will suppress a lot of that reflection uh, but it won't dampen it, if that makes any sense. A lot of that sound could be like moving around the room, but not reflecting back. There's a big difference between those two types of things. And you might hear it with the 90 degree when we're doing a uh, speaking into the window test. So let's do that right now. 
All right, 90 degree test on the Rode pod mic side. This is what it's gonna sound like in the untreated room, speaking towards the windows. And uh, these are both cardioid, as I said before. So they should have some rejection in the back and then more rejection in the rear. So keep that in mind when you're setting up your microphone. Uh, if you're speaking towards a window, this could be an example of what it's gonna sound like uh, reflecting back. Of course, you won't be speaking at from this angle, that would be ridiculous, but this is what a sound source would be from the side. Now, 180 degree test, about two feet away from the rears of the microphones, and still speaking towards the windows, this is what it's gonna sound like in the untreated room, and like I said, reflections off the windows could be an issue, but you're probably only hearing, not only, but most of the sound you're hearing is reflections back, as opposed to sounds from the rear, like literally from the source, more so from the reflection back. All right, so there's your untreated room test. And like I said in a couple of videos, I'm not doing the noise test in this room. If you're interested in that, I could offer up a uh, audio sample to you all. If not, then I feel that the audio noise test in the studio is good enough. I, through my tests, I really haven't noticed much of a difference. I mean, maybe some road noise or whatever, but I think the noise of the microphone is more important. So let's go down to the studio and finish this up. All right, so the Shure MV7X. I know I keep saying the MV7, but you know what I mean. Uh, it is my preferred microphone in this comparison. Now, certain things that really put it over the edge were the frequency response. Uh, I feel like it's more smooth and more just smooth. And the darker tone does help, but as far as the chart is concerned, I think it's better uh, tuned. I mean... The Rode Pod mic is nice, has a more wide uh, range, but the drastic uh, peaks and valleys was always my critique on it. Uh, it's it's a great microphone, but definitely something that held I held against it. Uh, then when it came to plosives, reason why I have the Shure SM7B stock pop filter or windscreen on right now is the plosive rejection on this is not as good as the Rode pod mic but i could definitely notice the difference like you notice that it's pretty good but it does alter the tone a little bit the other things that came up that put this one over the edge for me at least were the off x rejection i think that the tone like the the tone was the major thing the the noise in which uh, is picked up off axis compared to these comparing these two it definitely was similar it wasn't like crazy drastic maybe like a decibel or two but i did notice that this one here the shirt mb7x has a lower tone to its off axis rejection which makes sense because of the narrow frequency response it's a byproduct of that with having a more wide frequency response it picks up a little more airy more a little more room noise at least with the road pod mics uh situation then overall tone this is where i had basically a tie because i liked both of these i really did and i had to keep out of my mind the whole like oh well this one sounds more dark and smooth it's my personal preference which it is i do like a darker microphone but i needed to keep an open mind because that's my job i need to keep an open mind with these i can't just say like oh if, if that was the case i just have the uh sure mv7x or the sure sm7b be my end all or be all but as I said in the PD70 video, I pick the PD70 because of the flexibility. And you might say, oh, why didn't you pick the pod mic because of the flexibility? Well, and I, I've been consistent through this. It's something that bugs me about its frequency response. The, the way they tuned it is a little off-putting, at least for my voice. Maybe it's better for most people, but for me personally, it's a little off-putting. It was tough for a while. Like I was look, uh, like the thing that really put me over the edge was the off X rejection. But I listened to that boot section so much that I don't know. I just it was tough to figure out. But I eventually landed on this one. And maybe my opinion might change. But for for right now, it's the Shure MV7X, and I feel that it's the better choice. 
And I will say that if you get a decent pop filter or windscreen to avoid those plosives or work on your microphone etiquette or microphone technique, uh, that's certainly something I need to work on, but it's a tough thing to get down. Uh, if you work on that, then it definitely is a better option. So that being said, thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please hit the like button down below. It would be greatly appreciated. Helps this video, helps this channel get out to more people. And uh, really plays that whole YouTube algorithm thing really well. And if you like my vibe around here and like what's going on, microphone reviews, microphone comparisons, uh, sailing stuff will be coming out uh, soon. I'm going to be doing more of that and just expanding my just genres of content just trying to play the expansion of content and trying to play out to more people i don't know i'm trying to just expand uh it could it could be a failure it could be horrible but i'm gonna give it a shot and if you're interested in anything different or anything similar or anything at all leave it down in the comment section all i ask is you be nice constructive and you know the rules same things apply for the discord be nice and all that stuff you know the rules and without rambling any further Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.